We are on the road to Montreal. Yay! Bonjour. We've made it to Canada. I'm absolutely exhausted. Where are we going? Olympic Stadium. Olympic Stadium? Teams must now travel almost two miles to Park Olympique, where Montreal hosted the 1976 Olympic Games. Directly ahead, Olympic Stadium. A beautiful building, iconic, isn't it? It is. It's one of the symbols built for the 1976 Summer Games. Most people think it was the Winter Games. You know, if you appreciate architecture and size, this is one true beautiful building. It is stupidly big. It is the largest stadium in Canada. Oh! Yo, look at that thing. It looks like one piece of the Sydney Opera House. It looks awesome. It looks way bigger in person. The camera does not do justice. It is absolutely massive. That building is pretty much visible from everywhere. The stadium tower dominates eastern Montreal. It is the world's tallest inclined structure, 55 stories high. With a regional draw of 3 million visitors per year, Montreal Olympic Park is both an international symbol and source of national pride. This is one of the world's nicest examples of modern architecture. All of the weird funky shapes of it are all made out of concrete. And I love how good it looks. Being made out of concrete makes it beautiful, elegant. Oh wow, yo, look at that. That's beautiful. Yo, this is nice though. This view is so nice. Very beautiful, very famous landmark in the city. Loved but hated. Its history is one that has been plagued by controversy and corruption and just outright horribleness. The big, big problem is the roof. That roof has become a symbol of failure in the city. It's one of Canada's most famous landmarks, for better or for worse. Usually for worse, say many Montrealers. This is the iconic Olympic Stadium. What everyone has come to know is the location of those very memorable Olympics. Now, here they nicknamed it the Big O and some tax-paying Montrealers have come to know it as the Big O. It is the most expensive structure of its kind on Earth, 10 times the cost of the Houston Astrodome. And even though they're working day and night now, it might not be finished on time. When it came the time to host the Olympics, that tower there didn't exist yet. It looked very much unfinished. When I'm gêné d'être Québécois, là, je pense à deux choses. Je pense au Stade Olympique, je pense à Mirabel. Tu sais, ça a pas de bon sens faire des affaires de con comme ça, comme on a fait. The mayor of Montreal declared that the Olympics can no more have a deficit than a man can have a baby. Unfortunately, it took Montreal 30 years to pay off its debt just for the main stadium. The original estimate for the cost of the stadium was $120 million. And then by the time everything was done, the cost ballooned to about $1.5 billion. Jamais un édifice public n'a soulevé autant de controverses et transformé le rêve olympique en cauchemar collectif. It took us 30 years to pay it off, and as a taxpayer, not too happy about that. And yet, for many here, there is more to the Olympic legacy. You do you think the Olympic Games were worth it? Anything in sport is worth it. The whole thing was the brainchild of Montreal's mayor, Jean Drapeau, the national hero who brought us Expo 67. Who could doubt his visionary brilliance? Announce the result, which I do not know. For Montreal, 41 votes, Moscow, 21 votes. Déjà, le maire Jean Drapeau a une idée derrière la tête. Promettre aux Montréalais des Jeux modestes. Et en même temps, offrir au restant de la planète des Olympiades modernes et grandioses. To design his stadium, Drapeau didn't want just any architect. He chose Roger Taillebert of Paris, whose previous stadiums were not just buildings. They were, according to Drapeau, poems of concrete. Un poème de béton, mais surtout un immense casse-tête de 15 000 pièces. This building contains the first large structure that actually leans into space. But at the same time, it is a structure that is perfectly balanced. Look, it's stable, even though it's a model. It's balanced by its center of gravity. La naissance du stade est, dès le départ, laborieuse. Pour faire place au parc olympique, on doit excaver plus de 2 millions de mètres cubes d'argile et de calcaire sur un vaste terrain vague adjacent au parc Maisonneuve, dans l'est de la ville. Non seulement le terrain est glaiseux, mais le sous-sol cause des surprises. Il est instable. La roche de fondation menace même de s'effriter. La découverte du sol fissuré oblige à revoir toutes les études sismiques. Déjà des frais supplémentaires au projet. 
De graves problèmes de productivité et de relations de travail ralentissent dangereusement les travaux. Les travailleurs protestaient alors contre les heures supplémentaires et la surcharge de travail attribuable au stade. In getting Monsieur Tiber, Montreal netted one of the world's great architects. At the same time, it acquired an enormous financial burden. Mr. Tiber also designed the Velodrome. The original estimate on that was $12 million. The current estimate, $59 million. The extremely complicated design, combined with an orgy of greed from Quebec's unions and business leaders, drove the cost into the stratosphere. The structures have become so incredibly expensive that at first glance the costs look like a crazy computer error. The budget went from $150 million to $800 million dollars by the time the 1976 Olympic Games were held. And even at that, the stadium was unfinished. No tower and no roof. Le gouvernement n'a donc plus le choix. Il doit intervenir. Le gouvernement se réunit d'urgence et écrit pendant toute la nuit la loi créant la régie des installations olympiques. La ville n'avait alors plus aucune autorité sur le chantier. La Hibert non plus. Immédiatement, les membres de la RIO prennent des mesures patroniennes, dont celle de ne pas terminer le match du stade olympique et de se concentrer sur les installations essentielles au jeu. Et quand le 17 juillet 1976 est enfin arrivé, tout le monde a crié « Au miracle !» July 17, 1976. The world has never seen a structure like this before. Those oh so glorious games in 76. They were pretty magic. We had some magnificent heroes of, of uh, the modern Olympics. We had Kamenich with their first ten, and, and we had the Sphinx brothers, we had Sugar Ray Leonard. I'm standing here with Nadia Kamenich, the star of the uh, 1976 Olympic Games. Kamenich, if you weren't around at the time, scored the perfect first perfect tens in Olympic history. Kamenich stands alone. Here we have Bruce Jenner competing in the long jump event, part of the decathlon. Jenner, now known as Caitlin, was one of the true stars of this game. He won the decathlon, a grueling 10 event, track and field competition, and generally the athlete who wins it is known as the greatest athlete in the world. The games were a place where I could, for one time in my life, be as good as I wanted to be. And that's what that medal represents. They kept thinking, hold on to the moment, hold on to the moment, remember this moment, it's gonna be over with so quickly. You got a long life to live after this. He's done it! Bruce Jenner set a new world decathlon record! There it is. Yes! What's up? What the heck, huh? Oh my God. Have you ever seen one of those? Uh, I never take this thing out. You know what it's good for? Show and tell. <laughs> it was a big hit at show and tell with all the kids growing up. They would take it to Oh, could we take the medal? You let them without going with them? Yeah, why not? Yeah. It's a part of my life. It made me who I am. In the background, incidentally, you see one of the electronic marbles here at the Olympic Stadium in Montreal. That picture is a live picture that is on the scoreboard so that the people in the all areas of this massive stadium are able to see in some way or another what is going on. Action is winding down at the arenas around the Olympic City of Montreal. I'm Jim McKay from our ABC Sports anchor position. It's been a big day. Les Jeux terminés, les athlètes repartis dans leurs pays respectifs, il fallait décider ce qu'on allait faire des installations olympiques, mais surtout d'un stade disproportionné et amputé d'un mât et toujours sans toit. La décision devenait donc évidente. Il fallait terminer le stade selon les plans prévus. Mais en réactivant le chantier, les ingénieurs québécois découvriront des surprises de taille qui n'apparaissaient sous aucun plan et qui auraient pu avoir des conséquences catastrophiques. Le président de la Régie des installations olympiques a voulu me rencontrer d'urgence pour me faire part d'une très mauvaise nouvelle. Le mât du stade olympique ne pouvait plus être complété selon les plans prévus par Taïbert. Plus on ajoutait des étages sur le mât, la construction avait le prix, là, plus on remarquait que les pattes 
celle qui avait été construite avant 1976, avait tendance, comme dirait ma mère, à s'égarer. Ce qui ici aurait voulu dire que si vous construisez et que la base n'est pas assez solide, c'est tout ça. Parce que tout est rattaché par la technique, c'est tout ça qui se serait écroulé. Le mât du stade est la plus haute tour penchée du monde. Il y a donc, à la base, des pressions énormes. Les ingénieurs retournent donc à leur table à dessin pour revenir avec une solution toute simple, l'acier. En choisissant de compléter les 77 derniers mètres en acier, les ingénieurs réduisaient de 6 000 tonnes le poids du mât. Bon, maintenant qu'on avait un mât, il ne restait plus qu'à y installer un toit. Un toit en Kevlar. J'ai ici entre les mains un morceau de Kevlar. Kevlar qui devait être aussi résistant et solide que l'acier. L'histoire nous a prouvé autre chose. A hydraulic failure while moving the roof caused a terrible rip in the Kevlar fabric, the first of many. This was actually supposed to be the very first retractable roof ever invented in the world. They attempted to open it four times, but they kept having issues with the top. In 1997, the PQ government announced a final solution. We had so many problems with it that I think the time for experimentation is finished. A brand new roof, this one made of Teflon. La toile est remplacée par une structure fixe, en fibre de verre, recouverte de téflon. Le toit cède encore une saga interminable. We choose the teflon from the American because this is totally sure rip. <laughs> this is great. Unbelievable. They should tear it down. They should tear it down? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, the only thing it's... But this is the symbol of Montreal. <laughs> it's a symbol to laugh at Montreal. Tear it down. The most useful thing we can do for Montreal is sell it at five, five dollar chunks. I'll buy one. Not only that, but I'll pay ten dollars for a lottery ticket if they'll let one of us push the button to blow it up. The Montreal Gazette said it was time to bury the big O. La Presse suggested it could be turned into the world's largest chamber of horrors. And Le Devoir wrote a prayer. O oh God of the stadium and Olympus, please stop the sky falling. Remember this in Paris a hundred years ago. They had the Universal Exposition, the World Fair. They had, they built up the Eiffel Tower. The Parisians were yelling against it. It was a monster, the structures of iron in the most beautiful city in the world. We should destroy that. Finally, with the modification, with the time, we find out it's a beautiful a masterpiece. It will be the same thing with the stadium. They're going to be, I think, the roof redoing it. There's talk that they're going to demolish this whole building someday. Kind of mixed about that. I mean, it, it is old, but it also has a certain beauty to it. Sometimes people, Americans coming here and boss say, we would like to see your stadium. We heard so much on the radio and people are laughing at you. We want to see it. Then they go and they find out, well, it's beautiful. It's a masterpiece. Just look. I like how it's run down, but it's still like... I've got to say, this Olympic Park, I think, is a good use of a former Olympic site because when I think of others that I've been to, but there's so many different activities you can do here. You know, you can easily quite spend, you know, a day here going to all these different places. It's almost like a spaceship as well if you took the uh, the bit off the top. What I like most about it is, look at that leaning tower. Isn't that crazy? And there it is. I was here exactly a year ago to watch the Gymnastics World Championships. It was a tremendous experience and just so much fun. <sighs> Feeling a little emotional. We are at the Olympic Stadium, one of the most beautiful attractions in Montreal. Many famous pranks were filmed here. Oh yeah. It represents unbelievable ambition of a time when we dreamt big and Montreal was the face of Canada to the world and it was a good looking face. 1976 Olympic changed Montreal forever. As the city politician in charge of sport, Manon Barbet says many in the city have put the Olympic debt behind them and are proud of what was built for a new generation. And today we have more than 1,000 elite athletes and over 100 coaches. And if it is that high, it's not a coincidence. It is because we decided to keep most of our Olympic facilities. Oh my gosh, this is very intimidating. We are at the Olympic pool here in Montreal, which held 1976 Olympic Games. It's been refurbished. All the boards are nice and wide, and an appropriate width to be able to be synchro. It's absolutely lovely. The bassins olympiques conçus par la firme Lavalin sont dotés d'un système unique au monde qui permet de hausser ou d'abaisser la hauteur du plancher par injection d'air ou d'eau dans un réseau de tubes. Ce système, une ingéniosité purement québécoise. 
Lila, you're gonna be here one day. There are precious sporting moments every day in former Olympic venues like this one. Just watch these little girls already reaching for sporting excellence. I thought I would take you up on 10 meter to have a little look at the view. First Olympics that Greg Lagane has competed in actually. Got a silver medal on this very platform. It's quite scary. It's quite like a very bright pool. Very different to what we get out of having London. The surface on the board is like this black spiky stuff which is nice for the grip on the feet. I've got a silver medal. Hey, 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 They'll need to look for a way in by finding the one door they can drive through. Ask this guy. Is this a Stand Olympic? Stand Olympic. Okay. Ask these people. Stand Olympic. Stand. Stand Olympic. Stand. Stand. There's no end. Stand. Yeah. I see the box. Damn it! It's right there. Three charters. Three departure days. Third stadium. Teams must now search this stadium for one of three charter flight departure times leaving the next morning for a mystery destination. You guys, we need to find this. Search the stadium? I don't know. My lord, where are you supposed to be? It's here? usually not real hard to find them. What do they do with the building now? It's used for sporting events. Uh, we've got trade shows and exhibitions that are held. From the beginning until now, it's been used for soccer, concerts, you name it. We're inside the building. My favorite part is I get to see what the stadium looks like. Oh, is it sweet? Damn! This is cool. Well, we can probably go home now. Very warm welcome to a great atmosphere at the Olympic Stadium in Montreal, the 2015 Canada Women's World Cup. Sasic looks composed. Oh, but isn't in the end. Drives it wide. And it stays at nil-nil. And the biggest roar of the night from USA throats. I guarantee you, this stadium will explode if Carly Lloyd's penalty explodes into the Germany net. Scores! <laughs> Lift off for the USA in Montreal. Germany in trouble here. States into their fourth World Cup final. Yes, Max. Yes, Kev. Boys. What up, boys? Yes, yes. As you guys can see, we're at the Ben Skate Park at the Olympic Stadium in Montreal. We made it like last year or so. Welcome back to Montreal, Canada. This is Vance Park Series. Canada have been incredible, gracious hosts for us here in Montreal. The gift that Vance is going to be giving them and leaving them is this park behind us, permanent Vance Legacy Park. I think it's amazing that you guys are building these parks and leaving them for the next generation to come up. This is going to be a game changer for the city. This bowl is nothing less than a masterpiece. It's 
skate park is so sick. We for sure gonna be back because there's so many things to do, so many tricks to do. <laughs> Deja vu when I came here, I asked Tony, I said, oh, this was in the game, right? Because I'm looking around and everywhere you look in this area, there's a skate spot. The Big O, one of the most famous spots in all of Canada. Where are we at right now, Tony? Montreal, the Big O. Skating the Big O. I actually skated it before I skated the contest because that's something that I'm most used to. It's one of those marquee skate spots. That's a place I've been wanting to go since I was a kid. And there's spots like that all over the world. You think of Montreal skateboarding, you're like, oh, Big O. The Olympic Park is basically our landlord, but we don't pay rent, so we got to be really nice. We call it the pipe. People around the world call it the Big O. And the pipe, Montreal skateboard legend Barry Walsh tells me, back in 1976, was actually the tunnel the athletes used to get into the Olympic Park. After the games, the skaters took it over and even got it moved to where it is today. It's just so special because it was never intended for skateboarding. It was designed by an artist, and I might even think he might have been a skateboarder. You never know, because why is it so perfect? So perfect that among skateboarders, the Big O Pipe is one of the 10 places you have to skate before you die. Right. That's quite a legacy. Look at that beautiful, beautiful tower up there. Oh wow, yeah, look at that. That's the Montreal Tower curve to it. They were saying about doing some kind of skiing event where you basically go down here, and you're gonna be jumping off of there. I don't know if that's gonna happen. That's quite a drop. So here's where the tower starts. And this used to be closed, but now it's offices. You can see that big glass window right there. On a rénové la tour, hein. vous savez, tout l'extérieur. On a mis des fenêtres, on a accueilli des jardins. Puis là, on a des locataires, c'est fantastique. This tower actually has a huge elevator that you can go in and it starts right here at the base and there's that observatory on the top and those glass windows are on like a 45 degree angle, spectacular look down. We are going to go all the way to the top. You can see the funicular going up. Okay, just got to wait for it to, to come down and we'll be on our way up. Uh, oh, here we go. You're going up now. Look at this. We're starting to go really steep now. There's the Olympic Village. Oh, we're already up. The tower offers a spectacular view of the city. Oh my gosh, look at that. This wow. is so cool. <laughs> the tower is the tallest inclined tower in the world at 165 meters high. The tallest man-made leaning tower, the Montreal Olympic Stadium Tower. Tilted at a 45 degree angle. In comparison, the leaning tower of Pisa only tilts five degrees. Comme le touriste international est arrêté, on va refaire la gare de départ, la gare d'arrivée, l'observatoire. Et le gros changement, c'est que les plus lumières, étonnamment, ils nous cachent la vue sur le centre-ville, ils nous cachent la vue sur le parc olympique. En mettant ça au niveau du sol, on va arriver, on va sortir, puis on va voir tout de suite l'effet. Le summum de ce projet-là, -là, c'est que l'équipe du parc olympique a décidé qu'elle donnerait accès aux toits de la tour à tous les touristes et les visiteurs. Je vous le dis, là, ça va être extraordinaire! Extraordinaire! So, did you girls have fun in Montreal? Yeah! <laughs> Thank you guys for joining us. Thanks. Now we're all on vacation in Montreal, which is a great place to be. So, that is the end of the Canada trip. I'm happy to have gone to compete, and it's been really fun while we've been out here in Montreal. Turns out, the legacy of the 1976 Montreal Olympics lives on in some pretty surprising ways. I think Drapeau was ahead of his time. What he wanted is to give an heritage to Montreal, and it's one of the most beautiful stadiums in the world. It's an edifice memorable at all points of view. When we said to the Committee International Olympic, Bienvenue à Montréal, le 17 juillet 1976. And when we said that in 1970, we didn't know where we were going. Taïbert avait imaginé une œuvre originale et audacieuse, mais éminemment difficile à réaliser. Le chantier olympique était en quelque sorte un vaste laboratoire. Il a fallu apprendre sur le chantier, comme on dit, faire vite et bien, car le monde regardait, le monde attendait. Former Olympian Hank Palmer was born the decade after the Games. He says this spirit of 76 still motivated him. Being connected to that gives more of a kind of glory to, to kids. 
It's like a twinkle in your eye when you say, oh, Olympics. Oh, yeah. Wow, Olympics? That twinkle has cost this Olympic city dearly. But Montreal's loss is the world's gain. From this legacy, cities around the world have been warned when bidding and staging the games, you must avoid the big O.